Well, let's see. He surprises in the last game. Chinese. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, he <laughs> bloody surprised wow. me. So, Mongols. Wow. No, what? Viper picked Mongols? Oh, he picked Japanese, what? And start going for Japanese. This is so odd. <laughs> this yeah, is this so is odd. strange. <laughs> like, I've never seen... Why would you pick Japanese? Why would you pick Mo Like, Viper doesn't really like Mongols in 1v1 as we heard in a lot of interviews from him, actually. He doesn't like Mongols. He doesn't really like Mongols in 1v1s. Oh, right, eh? He doesn't feel like they are this in the, like, top tier, tier 1, tier 2 category. I actually think... I think they're quite good. I mean, there's a little bit of a discussion going on there. Because Mongols yeah. are obviously very good in the... in early fuel and then later imperial, but they kind of fall off in castle age, right? And I feel like they're just as good as other civs in castle age. Oh, mm. it's just they've got no eco bonus. Well, in castle age, they're, they're probably as good as the Saracens, for for example, because they just have no eco bonus in castle age. The Saracens yeah. get the market, like, in Castle Age, that might Man, what, come what into Civs effect. really do have bonuses in the Castle Age? It's like Aztecs. Um, Elts. Elts, Vikings. Elts. Vikings. Chinese as well, Chinese. to some, some degree. Huns, of course. A little bit. Maybe it's a little Chinese, bit Tex, but, Persians. like, it's... I'd say at least half the Civs have some sort of bonus that affects them in Castle Age. At least half? No way. Yeah. Uh, after the game, we'll discuss this. I don't, I don't, we'll, I don't we'll think come back to this. It's not that big a deal. Yeah, but next interesting part is uh, Japanese for Stark. Like, I would have really thought he would go for Celts, for example, and yeah, not like... um, Japanese. Uh, do you think he will go for Men at Arms again? That could be a, quite a good I'm, option. I'm thinking it's quite likely. Yeah, uh, yeah. board type situation depending on the map, but with Viper having the really back gold, and he's he's actually done a mill start learn. as well. He's done a mill. Oh, Japs. is he going for Winchester style? That would be so sexy. He's, he's Japs though, so he can do a mill and a lumber camp. Yeah, of yeah, course, but, but still, like he's done it before the lumber camp, and the lumber camp will be quite late for this one, and early balls as well. They could go for very early men at arms. And very he might aggressive be player. doing like men at arms and towers or something, you know, just like going up really quick. And, like twenty one pop into men at arms and towers forward. This is pretty all in ish, actually. I've seen Winchester do it a couple of times, but it quite exciting. But Winchester's Winchester's just a weird, a weird character, you know. <laughs> I th I oh, think he might be wanting to go for fast up to try to semi counter the really fast Mongol scouts. Like, so if he could do 20 pop man at arms or something, he'd be in a a decent position versus the 20 pop scouts from Mongols. I like that middle wall from Viper. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen him do that a few times, actually. He really thinks about his buildings, you know? Uh, very admirable. Yeah, so eco bonus is in Castle Age from Nilford. Aztec. Aztecs, British, Chinese, Celts, Mayans, Vikings. Britons Vikings. don't really Wait, have. Britons? Britons don't really have a bonus in Castle Age. They have the um, cheaper TCs. Cheaper TCs. That's, that's quite huge, that's actually. Pretty, that's pretty major. Well, like I mean, it helps you get your TCs up. It doesn't help your eco. Um, uh, <laughs> getting your TCs goals. up is not helping you. No, eco. but I can't like really agree with that. It's an ongoing thing. It's like it's like. All right. Well, then it's like saying that the Mongol hunt bonus isn't. A big, big deal in Castle Age. You could get up really quickly and get your TCs up quicker, you know? It doesn't really make sense for one. Not really, though, because if you go up, if you went up that much faster, you wouldn't have the wood for your TCs. I'm not saying it's not a bonus, I'm saying it's not like a. Anyway, Stark and Viper I think, I think up at the same time. Right down Turks. Turks he didn't write down Turks. I don't know, I don't have it open. Yeah, right, anyway, so Stark is going Stark for Men at Arms. Like, would, Definitely. Yeah, you think so. You would think so with two on gold, so. And only 19 villages, so he's the same as the Mongols at the moment. So we will be Men at Arms with Mongols, and it seems Thanks. like it's a pause. It looks like Very Stark is sending some really injured villages. 
out. I'm not sure if that's just a big barracks. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure about this. Which player? Stark. From Stark. I'm, I'm not... Not sure. I feel like his eco is going to be incredibly weak. Yeah, I think he probably needed to get the barracks up a little bit faster. And maybe go for like one or two extra vills. And so already have the militia out. Now. Like they try to get militia in there before he gets to feudal. So like a drush, past feudal, man of arms sort of a strat. Okay, first thing coming out for him is a spearman though. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. But then it's like, what, what's he going to do with the men at arms? Like, is he going to do any damage or... Oh, he's going yeah, forward no with them actually. He's not going forward with villagers at the moment. And he's getting housed constantly. He might be... <laughs> I, I feel like he's going to gonna use the spearman aggressively. So there's like nothing that Clive yeah, can really do against the men at arms and the spearmen. I like the combo but a lot actually I'm... against scouts. Men at arms it, it is, is quite it is powerful. very, very strong. Yeah. Viper is going for early range. It looks like he's going to be adding some systems. Not sure how well that's going to go with the amount of arms as we saw in the last game. I think it's mainly because he scattered the, the gold. You gotta assume that Archer's going to follow it up. Yeah, but he's not on gold yet. So like, unless he's just planning on making the single Archer. Range units are good though, just against this, this Spearman. It's actually, yeah, it's actually, um... Quite dangerous for Viper. Yeah, but he has Painting time this. on his side. Because once he can get enough, sp yeah, enough no, scouts, I, I, sorry, I like agree. the five, six, seven number of scouts, then this army is going to be yeah. pretty dead. And it takes a, couple a long of time for Stark to get army in here to reinforce because infantry is just so slow. He's going to take out the spearmen with the skirms. Yeah. Wait, well, that's what he plans to do. What is he planning to do, but. Oh, he's now aiming with the scouts. Uh, yeah, it still took a I lot of damage on the scouts. Was a good fight or a bad fight? I'm not entirely sure. Even at the I moment, that I think. Was, that was, that was, no, that was very bad for Viper. He has two scouts and three health. Three and four oh, health. Oh, yeah. Each. Two scouts and three health is pretty bad. Only one hit from Man at Arms and they're dead. There they go. There goes one, down goes two. God, Stark is doing so much damage. Damage with his men at arms in these two games. Yeah, <laughs> quite amazing. It's yeah, it's uh, year of the year of the men at arms. Year of the men at arms. You, you did call it. You did. Call I it, did call it. Yeah, I did call it. These these oh, men at arms are quite. The they're quite chunky. You know, they've got a fair bit of health left on them. Oh, and just the fact that they're Japanese men at arms with their yeah exactly, faster yeah. attacking. And Viper's Put still a lot of damage gold. out. He just wants to get a bit of an... I don't know what he wants. A bit of an eco going, maybe? I'm guessing he's just going to go full skirms because he expects archers. But Stark can always just add in more mana arms to semi-counter the skirms. Expect him to... to do that. Or even just go up faster. Not spending... On scums. Now Stark also making the transition into arches. I guess that's quite expected. You'd love to see Viper need... go down 3-0, wouldn't you? Yeah, uh, kind of, yes. I don't know why, but... I... 
Yeah, yeah, it would be so idea. unexpected. I love it. <laughs> it would be it, love it would it, be so unexpected. Be fantastic. You know? Yeah. Yeah. The An upset. Well, it would definitely make the group a lot more interesting. Because yeah. if he gets nothing here, then he's at a pretty significant disadvantage. And yeah, Stark's got a pretty formidable little force going going across the map here. I like how you said that. He's got well, a fair bunch of skirmishes mixed hard. in. Yeah, he is. Oh. Viper going to goal as well, so he will be transitioning into archers as well. I guess we will have a little bit more of a drawn up fuel fight here. Uh, maybe I, yeah. Maybe Viper is going for a little bit of an earlier cast late time. He's seeking yeah, more uh, farms. I think that's. I think that's what he's. He's going for making so many farms, but he, he's really going to struggle to. Well, not not struggle, but he will have he's a not hard time doing holding damage. Him. But he should be able to defend relatively well because he has a lot of skirms out. Does he somehow has a three vil advantage? Not yeah, sure how that happened. But... Does Stark have wheelbarrow? Yeah, they both have wheelbarrow, I think. Both do, I think. Um, maybe Stark yeah. cuts too much eco for this mana dom, for the mana dom Yeah, they both have, they both have wheelbarrow, so... I mean, mana doms are quite expensive. Mana doms are very taxing, so especially with so few villages, you know, early on in feudal age, but... Yeah, because you have to make a mining camp, you have to have two villages and gold, you have to have a mining camp that really yeah. cuts into your food eco, oh, food eco in feudal age. Japanese mining camps basically it's nothing. Yeah, still. It's like the amount of wood they save on the mill and the lumber camp means still pretty you're expensive. not losing anything compared to a normal sieve. Robo, they actually cost 50 wood. Yeah, not but nothing. you saved 100 between the mill and your lumber camp, so you're still 50 wood ahead of another sieve. It's still expensive. Though. Still not. <laughs> still not nothing. You know, it's it all adds you up. You have 100. You have 50 extra wood than another sieve doing the exact same strategy. That's up. Anyway, Viper is up to Castle Age. We expected. He's actually got a fair, fair distance on Stark. Stark's made a few more skirmishes. You see, if Stark can make this reading worthwhile at all. Stark is doing the same thing again as he did in the Hans War game. He's suiciding army into Viper space and see and looks what yeah. he can pick off, <laughs> basically. Difference is this time he's got skirmishes yep. opposed to Kavach, so he's done a lot less damage. He could probably go kill this villager that's all on left hand side though. She's only on like 12 health at the moment. Yeah, so Viper's going oh. to knights now, following up those. Yeah. Oh, Stark is doing the same thing. That's not good for Stark, I think. No. Not at all. Really not. Japanese don't get bloodlines, oh, no bloodlines. plus no camels. So he will be at a major disadvantage in that regard. He must he must assume that Viper's not up because of all these all these scams that he's making, but he, he made so many farms early on. Well he's seen the stables, so that that probably would have given it away ten seconds and before he hit Castle like, Not only not only Japanese not have any bloodlines, but you know, Viper can make camels if necessary, so it's uh not ideal. Stark actually doing a third stable. I'm not sure what this is about. Oh, this is interesting. Is he going full knights? Yeah, yeah, he's going full knights versus a camel sieve. I. <laughs> well, it'll sure. go very well versus these skirmishes. That's well, questionable. Like, that, that that is one minor positive. Foods, yeah, that gum. <laughs> Twenty four for Stark. I think you, I think you realized that this might be the end. Who knows? You can hold on. I mean, let's see. Damage is now moving Life forward. Got quite a nice wall off now. Off the entire left hand side. 
Plus two defense now on the knights for Stark. So he's really investing a lot in it. And he is the knight of gold as well. Well, his secondary goals is it is in the front. Outside the walls. Well, he sort of has to do plus plus two armor if he doesn't get bloodlines. Yeah, of course. Yeah. To try to close the gap a little bit in the upgrade department. Yeah, but that's why it's quite all in because you have to invest a lot to actually make make it even. A lot more than the Mongol in that regard. You see, Viper is making some camels now, and. I mean, Stark can't even take the fight against the knights. Okay. And... Oh, don't worry, he has four archers here. That, that might make the difference. Well, let's see. Right, guys? No. Robo, you are wrong, as always. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. I'm sorry. It's just how it is. Oh, the full and, is here, yeah, guys. And a camel coming in as well. Yep. Camels are so strong. So, yeah. So Vibes in a pretty strong position now. He's in a pretty good position, I agree. Got a Ville advantage, TC advantage, Army advantage. Forward Siege Workshop soon, I expect. Yeah, I would really like to see that Forward Siege Workshop, but he's going for a 30 yeah, pressure at the that moment. Gold. I think he could straight up GG Stark now if he goes for a Forward Siege Workshop with more Knights. Great. What is Stark going to do about this now? I can't really see what he can do, to be honest. He's making more knights, but GG. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot. There's not a lot he can do. So Viper taking a game now. Uh, two to one for Stark. Oh, can we see a big comeback? I personally wouldn't put it past him.